Sarah here. So we are finally doing the very, very, very highly requested sun-kissed video. Before we get too far into the video, I just want to ask if you enjoy any of these videos uh, to just subscribe and maybe share one of the videos with someone that you think will um, learn from it or enjoy it. As far as I know, I am the only person or one of the very few people who do corn snake morph specific videos and I do these deep dives. So if you guys are enjoying it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Um, now, Sunkiss and Stargazer are actually kind of both we're going to talk about. I'm not going to go too deep into Stargazer. I'm only going to say that Stargazer did originate at the same time as Sunkiss. So, uh, for a lot of people who are kind of new to the hobby and you see something like Gazer Free or Gazer Tested or Stargazer Tested or, or whatever else like that. Um, since Sunkist and Stargazer both originated at the same time in the same line, there is a higher percentage that uh, of Sunkist that will be Stargazer in comparison to other morphs. Now, uh, Stargazer is in itself a separate recessive mutation. Uh, it isn't inherently harmful to the snake, but uh, pretty much it just kind of makes the snake have this like wobble and they don't really know which way is up. Uh, a lot of people will compare it to IBD in uh, like boas and pythons, but it is not the same thing. There are very similar um, like behaviors, but they are definitely not the same thing. Uh, they are only inheritable. It's it's not you, a snake cannot get stargazer from another snake that is not like its parent. If that makes sense, it's not it's not a disease like IBD is for boas and pythons. So I'm going to jump into the actual sun kiss portion of this now because I have a feeling this video is going to be a long one no matter how fast I try to talk and no matter how quickly I try to get through these points. So I'm going to try to get through them as efficiently as possible. I do have my honey art in the background today since we are talking about the sun kiss gene. That's I think the only art that I have that actually has a sun kiss gene present. So I thought I'd hang it up today. Uh, and again, if you are an artist and you want your art featured back here, uh, just email me and let me know and we will work something out. Email is in the description down below. So Sunkiss and Stargazer both originated in Kathy Love's Okatee line in the early 1990s. Kathy Love was one of the very first people in general to be breeding corn snakes, uh, but she was also one of the first people to actually start producing Okatee line corn snakes. And I, I think I've talked about Okatees before. I can do a more specific deep dive on Okatee itself. I talked about it in my like normal types video before, uh, but I will do a more close deep dive on just specifically Okatee later on if that's something you guys want. But Okatees themselves are defined by the thick borders that they have and uh, Kathy Love specifically really likes these sort of larger blotches on corn snakes and so that's where the Kathy Love line kind of comes in is the thicker borders, the larger blotches, and obviously bold colors. Um, so again I'm not going to go into the specifics of all the different Okatee lines and where they all originated and all that right now. All you need to know really is that the original Sunkiss came from an Okatee line. Uh, and I don't think that that's so much important uh, for anything else other than at least you know like where it came from. Uh, a lot of different gene mutations came from different lines and I talk about that in my second book. Uh, I have two corn snake books right now. I have the history of gene mutations which I'm actually I have here in front of me to sort of reference uh, because as much as I wish I could just tell you guys I remember everything I've ever written down or ever read, it is not that simple. That's why I wrote it down to begin with so that I could come back and read it and then when other people we're like, hey, you seem to know a lot. How do you know this stuff? And it's like, well, because I wrote it down. And um, they're like, please share this knowledge. And so that's when I actually wrote my first book to share the knowledge of the history. And then the second book was to share the knowledge of the selectively bred types. So that is where a lot of this information is going to be. Um, there's obviously other places that this information is. I got my information mostly from forums and stuff like that. But the reason that I compiled the information was to make it easier for you guys to find. Um, so uh, Sunkist is characterized mostly by, it is a hypotype. So for those of you who may have watched my video on hypotypes, basically hypo is short for hypomelanism and it reduces the melanin from the typical straight black that you will see in, an, in a regular Okatee corn snake or just a normal corn snake in general. And it reduces it down to like a gray or a brown or a tan color. Uh, so when you see most, I say most, Sunkiss corn snakes, you will see that they are, uh, they look very much like a hypotype as far as their coloring is concerned. Now, 
I say most because there are some Sunkists that come out looking like weirdly patterned normals. Uh, and this is kind of an odd anomaly. I have asked people in the past if they have tried on purpose to replicate this because in most instances I have asked people, you know, they, they'll post like, oh, it's a really dark sun kissed. And, and I'll say, have you tried specifically to reproduce that? Uh, just out of curiosity, have you tried to reproduce that dark look before in your collection? Uh, and if so, how, how is that going? Is that a selectively bred thing? And um, no one has really come out and said anything about that. Uh, so as far as I know, no one has actually done a trial on the dark colored sun kists. Uh, they just seem to appear randomly and I don't know. I don't know if, if it's something that can be selectively bred for or not. If anybody would like to, you know, anybody who might have purchased or uh, hatched any of these really dark colored sun kists, I would love to know if you are doing anything to purposely produce them or reproduce them and how that's going for you. Please let me know in the comments or shoot me an email if you are one of those people who's working with the dark colored sun kists and uh, if you have happened to hatch a dark colored sun kiss, I'd also like to hear about that. Uh, so. We are going to continue on with Sunkist is generally a hypo type though. Even though these dark Sunkists exist, Sunkist is still considered a hypo melanistic type. Um, and it actually was originally thought to be just a typical hypo, uh, but then Kathy Love actually bred it to a known hypomelanistic. You get normals and you find out that these are two separate strains. Sunkist is also kind of weird though because it changes the pattern as well. There are not very many mutations that change both color and pattern. I would say Sunkist is one, Mask is probably one, and um, Cinder, which I did a video on a few weeks ago, uh, is also probably one of those that I would say changes both pattern and color. But overall, you either have a pattern mutation or a color mutation. So Sunkist is kind of weird because of the way that it changes the saddle shape. It changes and it also changes the head, the head pattern shape. So the saddle shape is usually, instead of your typical like saddle shaped blotches, they kind of end up being like um, sort of squared off on the sides of the snake and then almost sort of like rounded in the front and back. Uh, it's a little difficult for me to explain, but I'll be trying to put pictures up on the screen to help with that. Uh, maybe some comparison photos. Um, Sunkist is also very weird. Like a lot of people confuse it for mask because it does have a very like weird sort of disconnected head pattern in comparison to the normal. Uh, and they are confused for each other often because of the head pattern, because that's one of the main, like that's what mask is named after is the sort of mask look to the head pattern. And so when people see that look on Sunkist, they either wonder if their Sunkist is also mask or they think that their Sunkist just is a mask because mask can also slightly alter the pattern and it can also uh, slightly reduce the melanin a little bit. The biggest difference between mask and sunkiss, though, if you are really wondering, like, do I have a mask or a sunkiss, and, and you don't really know who to ask or where to go, um, if you have a shed from that snake and there's any melanin retention in the shed, then it is a mask or it is at least not a sunkiss. Because sunkiss, no matter how dark they are, and I have a few relatively dark sunkiss, I say they're dark, they're charcoal sunkiss, so they're just kind of dark uh, because of the charcoal. Uh, but even, it seems, the darkest sun kissed still do not have melanin retention in the shed. Uh, so if you have a shed skin from that snake and you see that it's perfectly clear, you might have a hypotype. Um, all hypotypes should be that way, except for mask. Mask is sort of considered a hypotype, but it's not a real hypotype because it still has the melanin retention in the shed. Um, I do want to move on to what does sun kiss do with when mixed with other gene mutations. And this is a really weird one because Sunkist is, as we have said, I say we, me and friends of mine, Sunkist breaks things. Sunkist is the gene that just breaks other genes. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you have, I'm gonna go with the most obvious example, and that is Shatter. Um, Shatter is Sunkist and Cinder combined, and uh, Cinder, as I mentioned in my last Morph Deep Dive video, is a very like weird gene. It does weird things to the pattern anyway, but uh, if you mix that with Sunkist, the pattern just doesn't know what to do. It just 
flies all over the place. Uh, one thing I did not mention in the Cinder video that I thought I would at least mention here for this specific context is that Cinder oftentimes will make the saddles smaller and thinner and it will also have it will cause a lot of snakes to have more saddles so uh, you can count the number of saddle blotches on a normal corn snake and those usually have uh, a certain average uh, when you have a cinder corn snake though that that number is usually three or four or five higher than your average. So if the average corn snake has, I don't know, I'm just throwing in the dark here because I don't really want to look it up right now. Let's just say 25 blotches from head to tail. Um, your sender is going to have more like an average of 30. Sunkiss though does the opposite. So your Sunkiss is going to have more like 15, 20 instead because it sort of elongates those saddles and rounds them out in a weird way. So what you have is two different gene mutations that are sort of working against each other. You have Cinder that wants to add more saddle blotches and then you have Sunkiss which wants fewer saddle blotches and what you end up with is this like crazy pattern that doesn't know what to do or where to go and thus you have the Shatter corn snake and Shatters are really really cool. Uh, another one where I want to say Sunkiss actually breaks the gene that it's mixed with is uh, motley. A lot of people will think that if you have a motley sun kiss, it's just going to be look very similar to a hypo motley. It's just going to have your you know your saddle blotches that are pulled uh, together at the edges. I did do a motley video if you guys are kind of curious what motley is kind of supposed to look like or do. You can go watch that one. Um, but you know you're you're looking at like a snake that has a little white dots going down the back, and that's it. Well, Sunkiss does not play well with Motley, and uh, as I mentioned with Shatter, Sunkiss has certain things that it wants to do with the pattern, and then Motley has very different things that it wants to do with the pattern, and so what you end up with is actually just a very, very clean looking Sunkiss that has very few belly checkers, but still sometimes they do retain some belly checkers. So um, Motley, I would say in the case of um, Motley and Sunkiss being combined, um, the Motley pattern does not uh, change Sunkissed. No, maybe it's the other way around. I would say Sunkissed does not change Motley, but Motley kind of affects Sunkissed, if that makes any sense. So you will, you'll just have like a Sunkissed looking snake that just has a slightly cleaner pattern and fewer belly checkers. Whereas otherwise, when Motley is mixed with other things, um, the motley pretty much takes over the, the pattern completely. Uh, so it is, it's just a very weird like combination to have uh, a sunkissed that doesn't, it doesn't look like a motley. Like sunkissed motleys don't look like motleys most of the time. Now I have seen a few, I've seen one exception. One, maybe two exceptions. Uh, Joe Peck has posted some photos of his sunkissed motleys and they do look like actual like hypo motleys. Um, with a little bit of the weird sunkissed head pattern on them. That is the only time that I've ever seen a sunkissed motley that actually looked like a regular motley type. Uh, so just kind of putting that out there, 99% of the time, um, every other sunkissed motley I've seen just looks like a very clean looking uh, patterned sunkissed. Where normally a lot of times sunkissed are going to have kind of like weird trickling of patterns that kind of are a little bit crazy. That motley kind of smooths everything over. Uh, another thing that is very strange is the difference between like a sunkissed tessera versus like a sunkissed stripe versus a sunkissed terrazzo. All three of those I would think in my brain, or at least the stripe and the terrazzo, I would think the two of those would look similar, like to each other, because terrazzo is a stripe gene, and stripe is obviously a stripe gene, and they look similar enough, and they basically do the same thing. But if you breed Sunkissed in with terrazzo, it kind of just looks like a terrazzo with a weird head pattern. So it is really weird that if you breed a Sunkiss to a Terrazzo, you just get something that just sort of looks like a Terrazzo with a weird head pattern. Whereas if you breed Sunkiss with Stripe, you get something very different. If you know what a Sunspot Stripe looks like, uh, that's pretty much what they look like. So a Sunspot Stripe sort of looks like the opposite of what a Motley looks like. 
So when you see a motley, like a regular motley corn snake, what you see is the sort of the majority of the color on the snake is the darker color. And then the spots are the lighter colors. So a sunspot is actually the opposite of that, where the majority of the color that you see on the snake is the lighter color, and then you, the spots are the darker color. And that's kind of what Sunkist does to stripes. So Sunkist pretty much turns the stripes into a sunspot looking stripe. Now don't get them confused. Sunspot stripe does not always have Sunkist in it, but the Sunkist plus stripe definitely looks very much like a sunspot. Uh, and then if you have, like I said, the sun kiss with terrazzo, just kind of looks like a terrazzo. Uh, sun kissed in tessera is also a really weird one. Sun kissed in tessera reminds me a lot of a shatter, uh, because when you look at it, you're not sure if it's a tessera, but you're pretty sure it's not a normal pattern anything. So, um, those are also, it's just a very weird combination. Sun kissed is the gene that breaks things. Um, now for most other things, like if you mix like sun kissed with diffused, that doesn't really do anything weird. If you mix sun kissed with mask, it doesn't really do anything weird. Um, one thing that I do think is really cool is if you mix sun kissed with anery. Um, and even if you mix sun kissed with like lavender, it really seems to brighten up the colors on those snakes more so than it would otherwise. So if you have like, say, a ghost, just a regular old ghost corn snake, and you compare that to a sun-kissed anery, that sun-kissed anery is usually so much more colorful. And it's the same way if you if you look at a hypo lavender next to a, um, a sun-kissed lavender, which is called an orchid, uh, the orchid is just so much more brighter in color. It's, it's just, they're usually just so much prettier. And when I say prettier, that's just my own personal opinion, but I, I think that the colors are so much brighter and I think they're so much prettier. Uh, it is just very weird that, um, even though if you have sun kissed in like the normal color, uh, it doesn't appear to be more colorful, but I believe sun kiss just brings out a lot more of the sort of brighter colors in that, like in the skin of the snake to, to bring them out when they're mixed with other gene mutations. Um, another thing that I'll mention that I think is really cool, but not really like relevant. I just thought I would mention it. Um, I think that sun-kissed anery corn snakes or sun-kissed charcoal corn snakes look a lot like the silver leaf in the Kestachi uh, rat snake, which is the Slowinski's rat snake or Slowinski eye. Um, I think that they look really, really similar. And I've always just thought that was really cool. I remember the first time that I ever saw a silver leaf uh, Slowinski's rat snake, I thought, wow, that really just looks like an Anery sun kissed. Um, and there are like Anery versions of the Slowinski's rat snake that just really do look like they just look like either a charcoal or an anery sun kissed um, but that's just a, another cool little tidbit i don't really have much more to say about about this gene uh, other than it is a very unique gene we don't really have anything else that messes up patterns like it um, like i said i know cinder does a lot of really cool things as well but it just doesn't it doesn't have even as many cool things that it does with other pattern mutations as Sunkiss does. You're just not going to find another gene, at least not right now, at least not that we have, that will uh, do all these cool things with uh, so many different gene mutations. At least that's my opinion. Uh, who knows? I might just not be thinking of something. So if there's anything that you guys can think of that you think is even cooler or you'd like to see a deep dive of, just let me know. Also, uh, remember I have books on my website if you would like to purchase a copy of either of my books. There is uh, t-shirts on my website if you want a cool snake shirt with my art, with my logo snake on it. Uh, there's also masks. I know a lot of people aren't really doing masks anymore, uh, but if you would like some, they're on there. Um, and I also, I have other little things on there if you'd like to go check those out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below what you would like to see next. I actually plan on having more hatchling videos coming up soon, but I really wanted to get this sun kiss video done for you guys because a lot of people have been requesting it. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.